my newest knife. I actually got rid of a blade to get this. Uh, many of you probably know, if you've been watching me for the last couple of years, year or so, uh, I usually take the one knife out with me. My uh, Diving Sparrow Knife Works, Boreal, ATS-34 full flat grind, gorgeous knife, but it just wasn't working well for me. Uh, long story short, it was too big. It was, I believe, 3 thick steel, huge belly flat grind. The handle was real big. And uh, when I was telling Ray about the difference between this knife and that one, if you're if you're into axes, I compared it to some of the newer axes today that are made with those big, thick, chunky handles. And they just, they're okay, but they don't feel great in the hand. And then you grab one of those old handles that are so small and you just lock into it. That's kind of the difference between the one uh, that I had and this one here. Uh, what what I ended up doing was I traded that other diving sparrow, which was a gorgeous knife, by the way. I traded with uh, Craig, Forest Walker 111. If you want to go check out his channel, uh, I traded with him for this. This is his Bark River Knives Aurora. Uh, I love the Aurora model. I've sharpened Auroras before. Uh, they're beautiful knives. Actually, Bark River Knives has a lot of knives in their lineup that I love. But uh, the Aurora in particular is a great, great bushcraft option. This is not the stock sheath. This is uh, Voyager Leatherworks, I believe. A custom sheath. Fairly expensive. It's nice. I like it. Scout carry. And it has a dangler. I might make my own sheath for it down the road when I have some time. This is a beautiful option. I like it. Uh, ferro loop. This is the Uberleben ferro rod I have put in there. But the knife itself, here it is. Again, it's a Bark River Knives Aurora. So it's a uh, it's almost as long as the knife that I traded it for, but much smaller handle. Nice, thin, narrow handle, and does it feel good. If you've never held a Back River Aurora, man, these things feel great in the hand. Uh, white micarta scales, red liners, mirror polished pins, which is great. The biggest difference for me is that it's a full convex blade. Well, not quite a full convex. It comes, if you can see that line, it comes to right there. So about an inch deep convex right to the edge. No micro bevel. And uh, it's beautiful. This is the CPM3V version. So somewhat of a super steel CPM3V is a insanely good steel. Very tough. Isn't that a nice blade? So this is actually the first convex blade I've owned. Notice how that bevel, what, about a convex, there's no uh, primary and secondary grind. It's one convex shape, right from the start to the edge. So this means you can expect some content on sharpening a convex knife. 90 degree spine, nice and sharp, does great on the stone. Really like it. Part of the sniffling, some of you guys, uh, I've had a few people now tell me in the comment section, blow your nose before you start filming or take a handkerchief. Let me tell you, uh, it's almost impossible to keep from sniffling out here like this in this weather. It's just always the case. I'm, I'm bending over, I'm around a fire, so you have the heat and steam going up your, uh, your airways, your nasal passages, your eyes are watering a bit from the smoke. <sighs> so you're just sniffly just what happens. Again, you're out in the cold. Almost impossible to completely combat that. Let me know what you think of this in the comment section. You like this knife? Compare it to, I'll roll in a couple clips of my last knife. What I traded it for. Tell me how, how you like them. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.